Hello crew, it's Rob and Rich from The Film Look where we drop filmmaking knowledge bombs. Today we are going to run through the entire process of our film 60 seconds so you can see exactly what went into making it and you can get some tips for yourself. Okay, so we are going to be referencing our short film 60 seconds a lot in this video. If you haven't seen it, there are links below and cards at the end. And we've only got 60 seconds. Oh. The idea for the film actually erupted from a video review we had planned for a LED studio light. The light had a bunch of pre-programmed lighting effects, including a cop car mode, so we planned on shooting a short scene for the review. First things first, we needed an idea, and it might be a good idea to subscribe now if you haven't already before we get into the meat of this episode. So, cop car light. A film about police? Detective Rusty Johnson? Hi, it could bring him back. Um, he could be arresting Rip Off Riggy. What's he been stealing? <sighs> bombs. The cops are defusing a bomb. Nice. What does the bomb look like? Right, keep talking and no one explodes. It's a VR game. Uh, one person tries to defuse the bomb. Everyone else has this big ass manual which they rifle through to find the right page to defuse it. I like all the different bomb modules. Yeah, you got like Simon Says, you've got wire cutting. And a timer. They could have 60 seconds to defuse the bomb. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? We make a film that's like really comically long, just like every action movie I've ever made, where it's like 60 seconds, but like in real time, it's actually like eight minutes and it's like really funny. You son of a b I'm in. So it was a bit longer than this. It wasn't as dramatic, but once we had a solid idea, Rob went away and he did the first draft. One of the main inspirations for this film was The Last Action Hero. Both me and Rob loved this film as kids, and we wanted to make 60 seconds lie on that border between action and satire. We actually broke down the filmmaking elements of The Last Action Hero on our podcast called The Film Look Podcast. You can find it on all podcasting apps, or you could just ask Google or Alexa to listen to The Film Look Podcast. This film doesn't get the credit it deserves, so go have a listen. Once we had a draft, we could throw ideas around and edit the script. It's a lot easier to work on something which already has words. As they say, you can't edit a blank page. So even if your first draft is a bit naff, don't worry, it's there to be moulded. Just please promise us that you don't go out and shoot your first draft. Send it to other filmmakers and get some feedback to think about the story arc and whether or not you can actually make the film. The first draft is probably going to suck, so send it to other people and get that feedback. We have a playlist of writing videos in the description below if you want to learn more. And if you're really struggling to find some honest, decent feedback, we also offer feedback sessions as part of our tier three on Patreon. Links to that in the description as well. So basically, nine drafts later, we had something that we were happy to make. The casting process for 60 Seconds was actually quite simple. We had two roles and we'd written those roles for two actors that we'd worked with in the past. The hardest part was actually convincing them to accept the roles. They'd, well, just said yes. It was actually really easy. If you've never cast actors before, we made a video all about that here. There are two methods we've used for auditions, reading for a character in a scene and performing a monologue. If you've been following this channel for a while, like say a couple of years, you'll know that somehow, whenever we are ready to shoot the next film, we always seem to lose the location. So for 60 seconds, we want it to be absolutely 100% concrete that we could keep this location. We considered a few different places and even shot some test footage, but the problem with these locations was the lack of facilities. So you got no parking, no toilets, no space for equipment, no electricity, not even space for the cast and crew to eat their lunch. These things are just as important as the look of the set. You have to make everyone as comfortable as possible, especially if this is a film shot by unpaid volunteers. So we went back to the drawing board and thought about where else we could shoot the film. Then we realised it was right under our noses. We'd recently taken over the studio space by the previous landlord and knocked down some walls to make the studio bigger. Mate, we've got the perfect location. We're shooting in the studio. We wanted the set to resemble a floor in a multi-storey office building that was currently under construction. Something like an unfurnished floor in Nakatomi Plaza in Die Hard. So we filled the room with cardboard boxes, paint cans, and various other construction slash renovation stuff. 
the only money we actually spent on the set, if you don't include our own studio renovations, was the caution tape which held most of the set together. We set up a bunch of lights and shot a range of test footage to see which look we liked best. Then we made adjustments to the set once the camera was pointed at it. Having all of this free time to play around was good fun, but it's a luxury you don't always get, so we took full advantage of it. 60 seconds definitely has the most amount of props we've ever needed for a film, and they were all crucial to the plot. In our draft script, we had vague descriptions of the different bomb modules. They said things like, in front of Dan sits a bomb, glowing green, mashed together with parts from every type of electronic device. Different coloured wires connect each part together. So we made all of the props with attention to detail on their interactivity, making sure they could be diffused. Then we rewrote the script to match the interactivity of those exact modules. At this point, the script was now a year old and we'd learned so much about script writing in those 12 months that, you know, here comes the script changes. Firstly, the ended needed changing. It was vague and not very cathartic. So we decided to rewrite the finale and give it more bang. We also added some slower scenes into the script to create a better sense of pace for the film. Careful, it's a bomb! Yeah, I'm well aware! We wrote two more characters, Police Chief Rusty Johnson, who's featured in our YouTube videos before, and a YouTuber called Cody Schwartz, who makes YouTube tutorials on how to defuse different types of bombs from around the world. These two roles were pretty easy to cast. You want to poke at the watch battery very, very gently. Once we had a script, a location and props, it was time to start rehearsing with the actors. So get the actors together and simply perform the script. You were reading the bloody instructions! I, 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 no I, I, more just... excuses! Right. I'm just, I'm You've just done enough! Things. We like to go one step further and bring them on location, if it's available of course, and act it out, working on blocking throughout the scene. We even grab a camera and try out some different angles, but nothing at this point is concrete. We workshopped the script with the actors, they tried different lines, added their own, and we basically played around with the script at this point. Then we went away and edited the script to include a bunch of these ideas that we all brainstormed. And then this is when it starts to shake, so just after that it's shaking. Right, and then we've got a line in, so he, he puts that in. Yeah, but doesn't turn it quite yet. He hesitates, why is he not doing it? He delivers the line, do it, do it now. Just exactly like Predator, like Arnie. <laughs> do it! Do it now! <laughs> turn around, yippee ki <laughs> Spin. yippee ki <-yay>, motherfucker. <laughs> so even though you have a final draft, the script still isn't complete. Get your actors involved. They might have some great ideas to toy with, that will make the script even better. If you don't think their ideas will work for the film, just tell them. At this point, you want to be open to feedback, open to changes, and everyone should just be brainstorming together. You never know, someone else's idea might be really good for that. And when the film starts to win loads of awards, you can take credit for it. Before you shoot, it's worth creating some storyboards. If you aren't confident with a pencil, the next best thing is storyboarding with photographs. If you can get your actors on set, that's ideal, but if they're too busy, you can find a few friends to help the stand-ins. Me and Rich took turns playing each character in the script. Storyboarding this way helps you create a pre -vis. It's a super rough version of the film, which includes most of the film's elements. You can play with the composition and the camera movement, trying different things and seeing what works best. This is the best time to spend some time making mistakes and figuring out what really works. When it's time to shoot, you already have a version of the film shot. Before we shoot a film, we like to have a blueprint of how the film is going to be made, so much so that you could take our production document and actually make the film. In our docs folder, we had a completed shooting script, storyboard, shot list, and a shooting schedule. If you have storyboards, you can turn them into a shot list and then turn the shot list into a schedule. Bring a bunch of copies with you and give them to everyone on set so everyone's reading from the same page. In our special features pack on our store, you can find copies of the production documents we created and also a walkthrough of how we use them. Links in the description. So what I like to do is I've got a set of storyboards. This is literally all the storyboards yeah. in the film. So, well, we have a crew storyboard so everyone can see it. Yeah, and, and then, then this is Richard's yours. storyboards, div and touch. That means don't touch. Don't. I don't want anyone touching my, my set of storyboards because they will get lost. Yeah. Oh, so uh, we go from red to green, sigh of relief. Just a tiny then little bit of this one goes multicolored. 
So with the help of our first assistant director, Cell, we sat down with all the production documents and worked out how long this film was going to take to make. So with a total of 12 pages and 75 shots, we decided it would take three days to shoot 60 seconds. The three days it took us to shoot the film all blended into one, but luckily we had someone shooting behind the scenes footage to remind us what happened. Dude, scene 7K, slate 36, take one, pick up. Fuck it. We filmed for two days in a row over the weekend, then filmed the third day on the following Saturday. We tend to film on weekends, so most people don't have to take the time off work since this is a no budget shoot. The call time for each day was 9.30 a.m., so not super early. Then we filmed for about 10 hours with a couple of breaks and a lunchtime, which is the most important part of any shoot, to be perfectly honest. On day one, it's always great to get the cast and crew together, sometimes for the first time. When it comes to the shoot, me and Rich split off and take dedicated roles. Rich takes the lead with the direction. Let's get that, that fear when it tips, and then let's get that moment of relief when they're alive as well. And I do the same with the cinematography. Most of the time on set, me and Rich rarely need to speak to each other. We've planned the film so extensively at this point, we're full steam ahead and we don't have to converse about every shot. Every now and then we'll have a quick discussion about a shot if we need to solve a problem, but that's about it. We need to cheat the light in a bit, Rob. What we need yeah. to do is make it almost in shadow when this comes on and he turns on. Okay, well, we can, um, this can be dim from zero to one as that comes Ooh. on as well. Okay, let's get this to zero. During these three days, Cell, our first AD, ran the shoot. He kept us on schedule and told us when we needed to move on to the next shot. Shot set. All right, we all set? Yep. Here we go. Ready and action. So by the end of day one, we had 28 shots, 77 takes, and we'd completed around four pages of our 12 page script. We were on track for day two, which meant that we could do the most technically challenging shot of the entire film. For this shot, which was shot 7R, we had three people operating five lights, one person spraying canned smoke and using a hairdryer to create wind. I was spraying water onto the actors' faces for sweat and our first AD cell shouting out the action to keep everyone in sync while Rob was filming the whole thing in a wanna. One. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker! And three. The shot runs for about 40 seconds. We had eight takes and three of those takes could have made it into the film. Once we got the shot, we went to the beginning of scene seven and started to shoot that. Shooting the last shot of that scene first meant our actors knew how far their performances would need to get up to and it also meant we were shooting the most energetic scene at the start of the day rather than the end so the actors weren't getting really tired. Come on! Do it! Do it now! <laughs> Cut that! Huh? Between day two and day three, we actually had an entire week where we got all of the rough footage and edited the film, basically. On day three, we were showing the cast and crew what we got so far so they could see the direction and give them motivation for that third day. Day three actually went really smoothly and we all got back up to speed straight away. We wrapped on both of the actors on Slate 60, which was a nice coincidence considering this film is called 60 Seconds, if you don't already know. Link's in the description. All right, guys, that's a wrap. When you hear the words, that's a wrap, it's a mixture of relief, but it's also a little bit sad. Being on set, shooting a film is the most stressful yet exhilarating part of making films, but you can't be on set shooting forever. At some point, you gotta sit down and you gotta chop it together. Here we go, three, two, one, and action. <laughs> you son of a <laughs> <laughs> I've got any tear! <laughs> With the three shoot days complete, Rich organised the footage and did a rough cut. To help find the tone and the pace of the film, temporary music was added, some of which actually made it into the final film. This rough cut helped us to see what we had, and at this stage of the project, we were actually quite happy with it. It was reassuring, but at this stage of the edit, that's a little bit of a weird feeling to have. For the cast and crew, the shoot was over, but at this stage, we actually only had shot 80% of the film. 
the other 20% of the film and the many insert shots that we decided to shoot without the cast and crew. You don't see the actors' faces of any of these shots, so we didn't want to waste their time, so me and Rich performed the actions and shot the inserts ourselves. And if you didn't know, our editing room is just a step away from where we actually shot 60 seconds. So this is the location. Uh, this is where our main characters performed all of the actions. We kept all the lighting and the set the same, so we could just come in and shoot all of those insert shots. Now we had everything, we both took turns to edit the film. I did the first rough cut, and when I couldn't look at the edit anymore, Rob took over and did a cut based on my edit. He called it the short back and sides edit since he chopped about 30 seconds off the duration of the film. Our friend Ed, who was the best boy on set and has worked on all of our films, he came in and did his own cut, which was shorter by another 30 seconds. Oh, why do we need this f***ing thing? I'm just gonna be head torch, I <laughs> Then we decided to watch all of the cuts and we worked out what was good and bad, then made a pick and mix cut, which combined the best of all the different versions that we had. We were in post-production at this point, but we still had a couple more scenes to shoot. We planned to shoot a different opening sequence where we started outside with a briefcase, following it into the building. These shots would have required a crew of at least six people and we wanted a group of crowded extras. Then COVID-19 happened. We're not going to make a massive deal about this. Um, in the timeline of the film, obviously COVID-19 was a big problem, but in the grand scheme of things for the production process, it just set back the release date of the film and we hope everyone's doing all right. So we had 96% of the film done and that other 2% was going to be this new opening sequence, which we've decided to cut at this point. And we decided to just go out and shoot the other 2%, which was the police chief scene. We managed to shoot this in a couple of hours with me, Rich and Ed, and the help of a C-stand to boom the microphone in. Mackenzie! 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 <laughs> a couple of days after this, the UK went into full lockdown, so we closed up the studio and we locked the picture over Discord. Rich also took his sound equipment and all of the props and costumes home and turned his bedroom into a Foley den. Shot 1A, slate 1, take 1. Okay, slate it. The first thing I needed to do was dead in the room. So I set up a C-stand with an arm and draped my bed cover over it to use as a sound blanket. Then it was a case of recording multiple versions of every single prop in the film in sync with the actors on screen. This took around three days to complete and then it was on to sound editing and mixing, which took around three weeks of solid work. It actually took a lot longer because I was stuck at home in lockdown, pulling my hair out with cabin fever. But anyway. After 122 saved versions of this film and 116 audio layers all mixed in stereo, Rob watched the film for the first time in about four months. I hadn't heard any of the sounds which had edited at this point and it was like watching the film for the first time. Mate. It's like watching a film for the first time. Everything was embedded into the film. Every prop felt real with different Foley and sound effects. It was like watching a proper movie. That is like watching a proper movie. Do you want that big enough? <laughs> Good. We made a bunch of tweaks after watching it a bunch, but the picture and sound were locked. There were a few minor visual effects shots in the film, mostly consisting of bomb timers being painted out or painted back in to match continuity. We knew all along that the timer was excessively long. That's the joke. Seems as though some people in the comments didn't seem to get that. Timer's still going, Stu. I'm well aware of that, Dan. But we knew someone would be looking to see if it counts down correctly, which we made sure that it did. Then we color graded the film. But to be honest, we only added contrast and a few other little tweaks to the image because we got the look we wanted in camera. So we just wanted to make the film pop. At this stage, the film was done, but it actually took us another six months to release the film to the world. That was some serious <laughs> The UK went into many different lockdowns. We decided to do another studio renovation, and then we also entered 60 seconds into the My Road Rail film competition. To enter My Road Rail, we had to cut five minutes out of the eight minute cut to meet the three minute maximum length the competition required. It took us a few weeks, but we managed to do it, and we thought it worked well. A lot of the character development was lost, but all of the action and the overall plot of the film was retained. We didn't end up winning anything, but it was great to enter the film into the competition. If you want to see that three minute cut, let us know in the comments below and we might upload it to the channel. 
Another reason it took a bit longer for the film to come out was because we've been making the special features pack, which we've been mentioning throughout this video. It's got over an hour of behind the scenes from the three day shoot, a director's commentary, a deep dive into the screenplay, and all of the production documents from the film. The special features pack is on our store right now. You can find a link below if you want to check it out. That is the entire timeline of the making of our short film. 60 seconds, it took a while, but it's done. And one final thing we want to say is thank you to our supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names going over Rob in the frame right now. We want to say thank you for helping us not be slave to those sponsors. If you want to support us on Patreon, there are links below, bunch of TR rewards on there. You'll definitely get something out of it. So go check them out and bye. <laughs>